Hi! Today we're gonna look at how to dress better for winter sports so you stay comfortable out there and have a good time. I will have two perspectives in this video because I grew up in northern Sweden not far from the Arctic Circle so it's cold so I know what that's like. And now I'm living in the Alps where it can be cold but most of the time it's warm or you have both in the same day it confuses me. In this video, we're basically going to talk about the three-layer principle and then a couple of random good things to know about clothing. First out is the base layer. Here it's important to first of all not make the common mistake to wear cotton. Cotton is terrible. It binds uh, water. It can even bind 27 times its own weight in water before it lets it out. It's a bit it's shit. It makes you really cold. So what you want to wear is either a synthetic or like merino base layer. That is the two options there are more or less in the market. There's all kinds of blends, but there are those two. I'm not gonna say much about the merino versus synthetic, because I already made a whole video about that. If you wanna know more about merino and synthetic and what to get, check out the video there. So that's um, the base layer. And it serves the purpose of bringing moisture and sweat from your body through the base layer and through the mid layer and outwards to keep you dry and warm. That's the base layer's job. Mid layer. They come in all sorts of sizes and shapes. This one is a bit uh, thick on the front for the cold days. Um, so in Sweden, for example, I would probably go for this most of the time or even have a loft jacket out of down or synthetic. I would maybe not always wear it, but I would Maybe pack it in my backpack because they're usually really light and they're really warm. Something like this. Thank you. This is a bit similar, but it's uh, recycled wool in this one. Well, in this one, it is synthetic. Like this gets quite small. I think it even has a pocket you can squish it into. Then you even ski in this one, only this one quite often. Yeah. Because you think it's pretty. So here's the primal loft jacket now. Super warm. Doesn't weigh much and it's really compact now. So that's pretty sweet. This is what I would wear often in Sweden or on a cold day. However, here in the Alps, this is what I would ride with eight out of 10 days probably. It's a 250 gram the square meter thickness, so you get a feeling. So you go back here again. On a really warm days like spring, I tend to replace the base layer for like a t-shirt. This is a merino t-shirt. Uh, this one is a little bit warmer and sometimes I also ride with a... So I adapt my clothing quite a lot depending on the day and the temperature. On the mid layers always have a zipper in the front all the way down so you can let hot air out if you're touring, hiking, etc. Open your jacket, open that and then you know you only have the base layer in between so you cool down quickly. And then lastly is the weatherproof outer layer. There's many different kinds of outer materials. You have Gore-Tex, you have Dermic Sucks, you have all kinds. I do not care really so much about what I use. For me, it's usually Gore-Tex. Uh, I have been skiing in Dermic Sucks, I think it's called. I think it breathes a little bit better, but it's a little less uh, rainproof. When I live in Sweden, here's my old red jacket, I quite like it. I would often wear something like this. It has a really thin, insulation. If you have a thick one, you know, it's a one layer, it's Gore-Tex out here, thin insulation, and then basically just have a warmer mid layer. Um, that's what I would go for in Sweden. If you are cold, go for something thicker. But if you go for something thicker, then in spring, you're probably gonna be too hot and you'll need a second jacket. And I've been cheap all my life, so I would always go for something that works all the time. Right now in the Alps, for me, <laughs> I'm riding with something like this right now. This is a three-layer Gore-Tex. It's a nice Gore-Tex jacket. Funny enough, it feels like you get less than you pay for when you have the Gore-Tex jackets with no insulation. They're usually 500 bucks, um, while something slightly insulated with Gore-Tex is like 300. Why is that? It doesn't make sense to me. So that's the three layers. Here are some details that make all the difference when you're out. First thing out. Glove liners. I'm running with wool now because I have an abundance of it being sponsored by them. But a big part of my ski career, just been rolling with like three bucks H&M gloves, like really thin gloves. Uh, they break um, after 
couple of weeks, but they're so cheap I've been riding with that. But often when cotton which holds wetness and it's pretty shit. But it's better than no liners at all. And then leather gloves. I only buy leather gloves. I don't trust anything else. Because when I was young, you know, I had many different gloves because I think my parents didn't really want to spend the money on the leather gloves because it's, it's not cheap. But they last such a long time and you use some nice glove fat on it every month or so and then when you use them. Then they're gonna stay alive for two, three, maybe four seasons, depending on how much grabs you do on slide on the edges. That tends to ruin my gloves. Next thing that makes all the difference in the world is the gator. Here is a maybe four or five year old one that it got stuck in the zipper many times, got some holes in it, and it's so important because any drag around your neck really cools you down. And when you crash in powder, also cools you down. I like the thin ones the most, I think, because um, they're versatile, they work all the time. Here I have a thicker one, 250 merinos. And I often wear it like this under the helmet. It looks stupid like this, but wait. I often wear one of these little uh, beanies. Also helps you know, bring the sweat from the head out. And uh, then the helmet. So the helmet locks the gator in place. This is a lifesaver when you're skiing powder and it's cold. It's great. Cold feet. Oh, it sucks. I don't like it. But there's a few things you can do. First, listen to all the previous advice in the video. Dress properly. And dress up if you're cold. If your body is cold, your feet are gonna be even colder. So usually if your body is warm enough, your feet are gonna be more fine. Another thing that's important with the feet, especially if you go skiing and snowboarding, is that you get a footbed that supports your foot in the right way. A footbed you can get for from 30 bucks to 120 depending if you may get a like standard one that just has like a arch support or if you make a custom one. And there's even custom wool footbeds you can get this day that's supposed to be much warmer. That's such an important point here. And that you always dry your ski boots properly in the night. Uh, last thing, gloves, leather. You should not put them directly on a heater. It really dries out the leather and screws them up. I hope you enjoyed this video about some dressing tips. For some of you, it may be obvious. I hope at least you found two or three things here useful for your next skiing trip. If you want to know more about base layer wool synthetic, check out that video. And leave a comment if you have some awesome clothing tips that you've learned about that I didn't bring up in this video. I'd love to hear it. See you next time.